Let's talk about inverse functions. I like inverse functions. Remember back before how we were talking about how it wasn't fair that the guys couldn't cheat but the girls could? Now they get their comeuppance. Inverse functions. Talk about inverse operations. If I talk about multiplication, what's the inverse of that? The inverse operation is division. Inverse of addition. Subtraction. The inverse of cubing. Doing the cube root. What is the inverse of the reciprocal. Okay. No. Nope. The inverse of doing the reciprocal, how do you undo a reciprocal? You do the reciprocal again. It's its own inverse. Uh, over. <laughs> yes, you are over. For example, if I take two and I make it and I do the reciprocal, right? So this is by applying one over x. How do I get back to my original? What would I put here? Wouldn't you have to do the reciprocal again? No, the reciprocal of 1 over x is x over 1. Yeah. To get back I'm to not one asking you to do the reciprocal of 1 over x. Inverse. I'm saying this is my function to do the reciprocal. If somebody, this is the thing about inverse functions. Whatever you do, they undo. So if you are a reciprocal function, if you come around and you flip everything upside down, but then someone has to come and clean up your mess, what do they have to do? They flip it back over, they do the reciprocal again. If you come around and you multiply everything times two, when I come to clean up your mess, what do I have to do? Because that's the inverse, right? The opposite of doing the reciprocal is doing the reciprocal. Think about it. T let me, let me t tell you this, Jess. If I've got the number 5 and 6 and 7, and you come around, think, this, is what I, this is what I had, and you do the reciprocal. You get 1 over 5, 1 over 6, 1 over 7. If someone tries to come clean it up to get it back to the original, what do they have to do? This, this the opposite of what they did, but that's the same as how do you get the inverse of a multiplication. You divide how you get the, I mean, that's like doing it again. It is. Maybe it's just your example is no, not. My brain is thinking like Jess's too. This is the last one kind of. That last one looks like I the need multiplication to see a of it. inverse of All right. Okay. Well, let, let, let me do this. Let me do this. I'm going to have some numbers here. Okay. I'm going to do 5, 7, 10. Bless you. Bless you. Oh, I'm trying to see. Okay. Oh, now, this, this, is the, this is the original. Now, somebody's going to come along and they're going to change these numbers. So, no, no, this is the original. If somebody comes along and says, so I'm going to multiply everything times 2. So then it becomes 10, 14, 20. So you've done something, right? How do I go from this back to the original? What do you have to do? Divide. Somebody has to come and divide it by 2, so I get 5, 7, and 10. Do you believe that? So with the whole reciprocal thing, let's take these same numbers here. 5, 7, 10. Somebody comes along here and they say, you know what, I'm going to do the reciprocal of you. So I get 1 fifth, 1 seventh, 1 tenth. Now this was my original. You changed it. How do I go from the changed form back to my original? What must I do? Because before I had to divide by 2 to counteract multiplying times 2. You must multiply it by its reciprocal. I don't, I don't multiply times its reciprocal. I just flat out do its reciprocal. So the reciprocal of 1 fifth is 5, 7. Okay. Now that I have sufficiently lost you. Well, here's the thing about inverse operations. We need to have one-to-one -one functions. So in the example you just used, to get from 
1 over x, the reciprocal is x over 1. No. Yes, you did. If there's a 1 no. underneath that 5, so now there's a 1 on top of the 5. You basically put the x on top of the 1. This, what I'm, this notation that I'm saying here is I'm saying do the reciprocal. So the reciprocal of this is 1 over 5. How do I get from 1 over 5 to 5? I have to do the reciprocal again. What is the reciprocal of the reciprocal? The original. Right, of course. And that's, that's the whole thing about inverse operations and inverse functions. If you multiply times 2 and divide by 2, you're right back where you started, right? I'm just not saying you take one bit and, and multiply by one bit. So exactly. One bit I'm not. And multiply by the reciprocal. The one over x. I'm not saying, I'm not, there's no multiplication here. And there's, there's not a whatever, there's a big difference between doing the reciprocal and multiplying times the reciprocal. But 1x equals 1x. Some things, sometimes your inverse operation, you cancel it out, cancel it out by doing the same thing. But why cancel it out? I don't. Because sometimes we try to undo what's been done. Later. But to now. get to that in okay, I'll read it in the book. This, let, let me do some examples okay. so you can see what I'm oh, talking about. I, I thought you were moving on. Okay, great. No, well, it's, it's, it all ties into this, how we undo things, how we get back to the original. Uh, we're talking about one-to-one -one functions. And so in order for us to be able to do some of these inverses and be able to talk about undoing things, we have to know what it means to be a one-to-one -one function. Uh, basically what this says is that each x is paired with 1y. Now, we said that to be a function, right? Each x is paired with only 1y. But for it to be 1 to 1, then each y <coughs> is paired with 1x. So you have both of these guys having to be true. Each x is paired with 1y, and each y is paired with only 1x. So before when we had functions, could the y's cheat? The y's could cheat because there's more than one way to get to the y, right? Now we're saying the y's can't cheat. The x's can't, still can't cheat, and now we're saying the y's can't cheat. And if we do this, when we create this situation where, where it's a one-to-one -one function, that means if you know what the output is, you can backtrack to find the input. For example, if I say, I'm talking about x squared, if I tell you that something squared equals 25, what was that something? Five. No, it was negative 5. See, what could you square to get 25 has two answers, right? So that guy is not one to one. What if I ask you this? What cubed, or my function is x cubed. So something cubed gave me 8. What was that something? That's the only thing that could work, right? If you look at x to the third, he is 1 to 1. If you look at his graph, I'm just going to sketch that up for you real quick. It's that funny S guy that we like. Something kind of like this. This guy is what we consider to be 1 to 1. For each x, you're paired with exactly one y value, no matter where you are. In order for you to be a function looking at a graph, you had to pass the what? The vertical line test. For you to be 1 to 1, you have to be a function that passes the horizontal line test. The horizontal line test will ensure that the y's are not cheating. So does this guy pass the horizontal line test? Yes. Yeah. What if I look back at my traditional squaring function? He passes the vertical line test, right? But does he pass the horizontal line test? No. No. It's so this guy, not a one -to -one function. right, this guy is not one to one. Mm -hmm. Which means, if I want to talk about the inverse, I can't do that. I can't talk about what undoes the squaring function. Now, you guys may think that the opposite of squaring is what? Square root. Square root. Square root. And for a restricted domain, that would be true. If I took this guy right here and I said, you know what? I'm going to restrict the domain to just be this half of a parabola. I know that the parabola does continue on over here, but if I say, no, I'm going to restrict myself to be this and over. Does this guy have an inverse? Is he one-to-one -one where I could find an inverse? Yes. Yes. 
Yes, because each x is with one y, each y is with that same x. Mm -hmm. You'll believe me. 